नारायण जय श्री मन नारायण जय श्री मन नारायण आई पे मो ओबेसेंसेस टू माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर श्री मत जगत गुरु सुदर्शन आचार्य जी महाराज आई पे मो ओबेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री रामानुज आई पे मो ओबेसेंसेस टू आवर पूर्व आचार्य आई पे मो ओबेसेंसेस टू आवर 12 अलवार्स आई पे मो ओबेसेंसेस टू मदर लक्ष्मी and i pay my obeisances to lord shri man narayan i welcome all of you here physically at the shri narayan dham in durban south africa i welcome those that watching this discourse locally nationally and internationally and i welcome in advance those that's going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on youtube and the various groups from around the world subsequently we welcome lord shri krishna and his entourage who took part in the great epic the mahabharat 5000 years ago at the end of dwapara yug and we continue with our main topic the significance of a bona fide spiritual master and i stated the original spiritual master is Lord Shri Man Narayan himself and then when the lord has completed giving the information required in the material universes through the medium of the vedas then the guru principle kicks in and it is the guru principle that keeps this universe in its current status quo so if you remove the guru principle then the universe will ultimately collapse and cease to be and you would have noticed that in the past 1000 years the origin of where the guru principle appeared in bharat for 1000 years in succession bharat was conquered by foreigners and it is only in its current status because of the line of the disciplic succession of gurus over those 1000 years and it is this information from bharat that is fueling the entire world and the prosperity of the world as a whole because science comes from the vedas mathematics come from the vedas all information required to survive in this material universe comes from the vedas whatever you see around you wherever you see whatever progress these all these all this information has emanated directly from the vedas yajwan guru is talking all this information came directly from the vedas can you see the importance of the guru principle because it is the guru principles that personifies the vedas and when the vedas is personified it actuates living conditions in this universe if you remove the guru principle then there will be no vedic knowledge and without vedic knowledge there will be nothing in this universe people will be living like animals <clears throat> all civilization has emanated from the vedas all prosperity in this material planet has emanated from the vedas 
everything that you see around you is a direct emanation from the Vedas. This information was stolen from the West <coughs> when they invaded Bharat. They were using bows and arrows. when Bharat was using nuclear weapons. There is solid evidence that the Ramayan is the absolute truth. There is solid evidence that the Mahabharat is the abs absolute truth. Solid evidence. And if you look at civilization in this time, the West was dressed in grass and they were hunting to eke out a living whilst Bharat was in total civilization. And I'm saying this with absolute certainty. The evidence is already there. It was then that the West invaded Bharat subsequently and took all whatever technology is there today, whatever physical science laws is there today. Currently they are describing the string theory. The string theory is already there in the Rig Veda. The first knowledge to reach mankind came through the Rig Veda. <coughs> and all of this, all of this is because of the Guru principle. All of this, your very existence, whether you believe in the Guru or do not believe in the Guru, the very existence of this universe is through the Guru principle. Your existence as a human being. So the Guru principle has to be taken absolutely seriously. And the Supreme Lord has taken time in the Ramayan and time in the Mahabharat to explain to humans how to live on this earth. The Lord has spent thousands and thousands of hours both living in this universe, living on planet Earth specifically, and showing man how to live in planet Earth specifically. And if you're not going to take the Guru system seriously, <coughs> the Supreme Lord doesn't care. He doesn't care. He'll just give you a, an appropriate body accordingly. An appropriate body accordingly. There is still 311 trillion. There is still 155 or 54 trillions left in this creation. You think the Lord cares? You need to care. And you need to take this material body seriously. You only get this material body when your merits and demerits equalize. It is then that you get this material body. And there's a very, very big chance that you will only get another material body hundreds of thousands of years later. So you will live <coughs> in eight million other species. And don't be like this cat. This cat didn't listen you know this cat is a devotee. 
You all know Lachman is a devotee, yes or no? These are not ordinary cat and dog. They are devotees, they didn't listen. Now they came in that form to serve their part of their life with the Guru. Understand? So you got this mind, you got intellect, and you got this ashram, and you got this Guru. And the Vedas say to be in the presence of a bona fide spiritual master even for one second. Even for one second is very rare. And Ashmika, how long you spend with the spiritual master in this ashram? You understand? Just one second is very, very rare. So use and utilize the time that you have so that you can assimilate and make this human body worth every second that you are in it. So I'm going to read as I usually do a few verses from the Vedic injunctions itself and I'm going to explain it to you as I go along. Sometime I give some sensitive information but if God wants me to relay a certain information on a particular day I do that accordingly. I take the instructions of the Supreme Lord and sometimes the information can be sensitive also it can be positive if you are involved in something and something is not right then this is the Lord's way of giving you information it's not the Guru Guru do nothing personally Guru have no personal stake in any individual's life Guru has no personal stake in any individual's life. Guru has a general stake in all of humanity to help transform humanity from material to spiritual. From material to spiritual. So I'm going to do a very quick test with you to show you that you are spiritual. I want to do a quick test. You're going to do it with me. And I want to show you that you are spiritual. So right now, you are all seated here in this ashram listening to the Guru. You are awake. Besides Sita, who never woke up for the past 50 years, Sita, are you awake? Okay. So you, are, so you are in the awake state. You can see the Guru. You can see each other. You can feel each other. You are in the awake state. Then tonight you're going to go home. And you're going to fall off to sleep. And when you sleep, Last person you want to dream of is the Guru. How many of you want to dream of the Guru? Sita? No, no, please, I don't want to enter your dream state. I have enough of you in this awake state. So when you are dreaming and you are fast asleep, who is watching the dream? Because this body is fast asleep, you know you fast asleep. You know you fast asleep. Unless somebody gives you a tight kanpati and gets you up. Up until that time, you know you are fast asleep. Then who was watching the dream? And the soul and your body 
now you know that your soul and your body are two different entities now this test is telling you you are two different entities because one entity is fast asleep this is your own experience of spirituality this is your own living experience of spirituality that whilst you dreaming someone is watching that dream so now they know there are two of you in this one body sita 330 million is in sita's body devis and devtas all right but in your body in your body you know now this got nothing to do with god this is absolutely scientific this is absolutely scientific you know there are two persons in this body one is asleep but one is watching the dream it means that person who is watching the dream never sleeps never sleeps and i'm going to prove it through you through you when you are not dreaming who knows you had a dreamless night so whether you dream or you don't dream there's an entity that knows and witnessed the dream and also witnessed the dreamless state yes yes anyone in the world this got nothing to do with god guru or spirituality this is a scientific discovery you can make for yourself a logical common sensical scientific discovery so the soul never sleeps your body sleeps to recharge your body sleeps to re charge so this explanation that i am exploring with you shows you that there is another dimension doesn't it this dimension cannot be seen yes but the guru is now telling you that the supreme lord has given that dimension which you cannot see which is called spiritual the supreme lord has given information in the ramayan and in the mahabharat in the four vedas in the 108 upanishads in the 18 puranas of which we will use six in the bhagavad gita and in the brahma sutras that information is not for the body that was sleeping that information is not for the entity that sleeps that information is for the entity that stays awake the whole night the whole day and it has been awake since time immemorial the soul which is you have been awake since time immemorial but you have been sleeping like the body you have been sleeping like the body so the job of the guru is to smack you with vedic injunctions job of the guru is give you a tight kan pati with vedic injunctions and shake you awake and tell you that you are a spiritual soul you are 
eternal you have lost your memory and you have been sleeping for 155 trillion years would all the bodies that you addressed would would all the bodies you addressed would the aquatics sleep plant and creepers sleep yes if you go outside you'll see all the leaves droopy plants and creepers sleep insects sleep reptiles sleep animals sleep and birds sleep so the 8 million species of bodies that you have taken you have been sleeping with those bodies and the job of a bona fide spiritual master is especially this one at the shri narayan dam i come from the military i'm not going to touch your forehead slowly and say wake up i'm not going to caress you into waking up i'm going to slap you into a wake state with verdict injunctions i'm going to get you up and many people don't want to get up really put your hands up who really wants to get up in this satsang besides sita and yajwan <laughs> you understand and this is the arduous job of a guru and this is why the guru is more hated than loved by mankind and this is why lord shri krishna stated consider the acharya to be my very self don't envy him lord shri krishna stated in the verse don't envy him or think of him to be an ordinary man this is a vedic injunction by the supreme personality of god had him self because when the guru is shaking you and waking you you don't you want to remain in your comfort of ignorance of the lord you want to remain in the comfort of ignorance of the lord but you also want to fight with the lord you also want to fight to the lord how many of you have been been to indian funerals all of you especially where a child has passed away before the parents and what the parents do thank god for some reason now funerals have gone quiet but years ago i heard them blaspheming the supreme lord they said god you took my child away i'll never pray to you in my life i'll never worship you in my life how could you take my child away why you didn't take me me away you have you all heard that you all heard and i like to say this i had four mummies and they were funeral specialist any funeral if we took them they knew how to cry and even after people had finished cried they could start them afresh they could the and my mama should warn them please behave the minute they land at these funerals they were specialist criers all right my mom is so i'm bring i'm giving you this information which is absolutely scientific 
I'm trying to awaken your consciousness and connect this consciousness to the consciousness of the Supreme Lord. I'm trying not because I want to do this. This is my instruction from the Supreme Lord Himself. Get people up and connect them to me. Once they know about me, they won't swear me at funerals. They won't swear me when things don't go right in their life. They won't fight with me when their life is not right. They will understand me. This is the job of a guru. And it is a thankless task. Because who knows, two years from now, Ashmika will be sitting with another guru. And she'll say, hey, the last guru I was with, he was absolutely useless. He was a fake guru. First thing they say, fake guru. You understand? So preaching is a thankless task. But on your side, on the guru side and God side, it's an absolute education system. Absolute education system. All of you understand? So I'm going to take you through <coughs> the Srimad Bhagavatam again. I brought my glasses. Okay, I found it. Srimad Bhagavatam. <coughs> Part 2, page triple three, And I have to beat the municipality. How many minutes we have? Eight minutes. Eight. Text 12. Srimad Bhagavatam, Part 2, Canto 11, Chapter 20, Text 12. The human body, comma, which can award all benefit in life, comma, is automatically obtained by the laws of nature, comma, although it is a very rare achievement, full stop, this human body can be compared to a perfectly constructed boat <coughs> having the spiritual master as the captain and the instructions of the personality of Godhead as favorable winds impelling it on its cause. Full stop. Considering all these advantages, comma, a human being who does not utilize his human life to cross the ocean of material existence must be considered the killer of his own soul. This is a verdict injunction. This is a verdict injunction. This is an instruction or an injunction from the Lord himself. He said you must consider the your body as the perfect boat as the perfect boat you must consider the spiritual master the bona fide guru as the captain of this boat and you must consider the verdict injunctions the instructions of the Lord as the favorable wind taking this boat on its journey to the Supreme Lord. And the Lord is saying, those who do not take to this instruction, then you are murdering your own soul. You are 
murdering your own soul can you see the significance and importance of a bona fide spiritual master and it is so important to take a guru that when lord ram came on earth he lived his entire life under the instructions of the guru when the guru guru told him to sit he sat when the guru told him to get up he got up the same occurred when lord shri krishna came this is how important the guru principle is that whoever enters the material atmosphere they are governed by it even the supreme lord him <coughs> self all of you understand okay <coughs> we going to stop here and then you got 3 minutes to connect to your other lighting system and then we'll do aarti we don't want to disturb the aarti all right jai shri man narayan